everyone welcome back to my channel learn smart coding in this video we're going to see setting and retrieving properties and metadata in azure blob storage come let's get started so this is a continuation of the previous blob storage video let's understand properties and metadata properties and metadata exist on both blob containers and on blobs the blob container has system properties like last modified and etag etag property which stands for the entity tag this is the string identifier that changes every time the blob container was updated. The last modified property tells you when the container was updated last. The blob has also the system properties e tag and the last modified. It has also several other properties like content type, content length, blob type and so on which can be block blob, append blob and or the page blob. Now properties like e tag or the last modified are read only. Properties like content type that you can set on a blob and you can read it from the blob. A blob container can contain user-defined metadata. Metadata are string-based key value paths that you can store on the container. Metadata exists also on the blob. Properties and metadata are set and retried via HTTP headers. Come, let's take a look at the demo on the portal. Now, back on the portal, I'm on the storage container learn smart coding and I'm going to click on the containers. So you can see there are two containers, logs and the sample, and uh, that belongs to the learn smart coding storage account i'm going to click on the sample container and you can see uh, there is a file and on the left side you can see the settings which is properties and metadata click on the properties and whatever you're seeing here the last modified e tag they all at the container level and for the container you can also add a name key value pair which is under the metadata now let's go inside the container go inside the designer uh, i have a logo.jpg file so for even the blob level you have a properties under the overview you can see the last modified creation time e tag all those property and along with that blob only properties like content type and, and other types right all those are blob only properties they do exist here and down if you see there is something called metadata here let's add a key value pair and see how it looks in the response header i'm going to add a key called image type and give a value logo photos I am going to add another key called word on image. So only underscores are permitted, dash is not permitted. Let's give a name it as, let's give a name called learn smart coding as the value. Now I'm going to save this. I saved it successfully. Now let's grab the URL, come back to your postman and let me show you something. So this is a get request. Let's hit it. We got the image back. And here, if you see, there are many headers returned. Here you go. You can see the e tag, entity tag, and all the other properties which is retrieved for this blob. And along with that, we have XMS meta followed by the metadata key that we gave, which was image type and word on image. And you can see the values retrieved as logo photos and learn smart coding. And that's it. This is how you retrieve the metadata and the properties of a blob or the container. Now, next, let's take a look at how to create containers, set the properties metadata and retrieve those properties metadata using .NET SDK. Here's the demo app. So in this app, what we're going to do is we are going to first put the connection string here, which has to be taken from the container, the storage account that we just created. So let's go back and see how to do that. And uh, these are the methods that we will be executing, which will create the container, set blobs and get the blobs properties. It will also set and retrieve the blog metadata. So come back to the portal. And here, if you go to the access keys for the storage, you can see the connection string. You can copy one of the connection string from here. And I copied it already. I pasted it. Let's run it through it. So the first one is going to create the container this is similar to how we saw the previous video with using the blob service client it will create the container that we have requested the container name is demo in this case so it's going to also upload a file from the local and the file name is file to upload and it will upload as index.html so it is done next is to set blobs property so what we are going to do is we are going to set the block property and this is how we set so we generate a block HTTP header and we set HTTP header async and pass on the object. Next is to get the blob property. So whatever we have set, we are now retrieving it. You can see the data is coming back. The properties of a particular blob is coming back. 
and we write it on the console. We can see the console in a moment. Now let's set the block metadata. So I'm going to set the category and the first name as the metadata and we will see how to retrieve it now. So this is how you retrieve. We create a block client and get the properties and go through the metadata and we print it in the console. Great. That's it. So you don't worry about this code. This is how the output looks. You, we created a demo container. We uploaded a file and that's saved as index.html. We have set the property, retrieved the property, set the metadata, retrieved the metadata. Great. This code is available in GitHub. Don't worry about the code. I'm providing the details in the description. You can always go and take a look. Just add the connection string and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel, like it, share it, comment it, and never forget to click on the bell icon.